Well, if you watch some of my other videos, you probably know by now I uh, I enjoy uh, North American freight and particularly switching and not just switching in the yards but uh, making deliveries local deliveries to local industries so today that's what we're gonna do we've done the, some of that and uh, but today we're gonna be sorting out in the yard uh, doing quite a bit of switching sorting out these uh, freight cars box cars hop cars and sort them, separate them out from some tanker cars and get ourselves a line of tanker cars to, to move uh, up to the local industry of uh, the ethanol and just drop it off there. In a lot of the videos I kind of get into a rant about things I are critical about with Train Sim World 2 and today I kind of would like to just just enjoy the switching uh, really enjoy Train Sim World 2 and maybe uh, not say so much but just come along with me for the ride you see I'm taking a conductor's roll uh, riding on the back of the, of the train last car on that hopper. Switching out the points and sorting out the first few cars. Just as a reminder, we are in Oakville. It's the Oakville route that's in Canada. Hope to see some more Canadian routes put out by Dovetail Games. best to be quiet and just kind of let you enjoy the the action uh, but it's kind of tough right? everything in me wants to fill up the space with uh, plenty to say I don't know why but there is uh, quite a bit of interest in a lot of the simulators not just the trains simulation but trucking and cars and stuff for people to put out videos where there's no no uh, no talking at all no voice just you know kind of like a let's play and um, I always I always think what well, this is a uh, hundred years since we've started talkies in the movie realm you know we don't do silent movies anymore but on YouTube there's plenty of silent <laughs> silent videos um, but I'm starting to now understand why some of you do like uh, silent video and just want to see the game and see how the game's played but for me my favorite uh, YouTube uh, personalities are the ones that you know are, you know, telling you something, passing on information, talking about what's going on, and talking about what they like and don't like. I 
I always thought railroading would be a fun career. It's probably hard work for sure, but in particular <laughs> up in Canada, some of the most beautiful routes that go through the mountains of Canada, I think that would be fabulous. You know, so scenic to ride those trains, but on the other hand, the work outside in Canada could be brutally cold. Well, we have a nice, clear, sunny day here. You can just barely see the coupler hand is open, ready to receive. Look at all those steel coils sitting in the yard on the other side of the fence. Nicely done. Of course, the conductor would be calling out the distance for the engineer to do such a beautiful job with the coupling up. So we got a few of our tank cars now sorted together. Let's take a kind of a look. There's three tanks up here and a couple box cars in between these two. So. I'm going to break these out. Ultimately, we're trying to get five tank cars together. Why five, you may ask? Conductor is thinking this through. Here we go. Why five tank cars, you may ask? Well, five is the uh, number of uh, dispensing units out at, at the uh, ethanol facility. You can do five at a time. So I figured I'd get, I'd get five sorted out here in the yard, and then we can move those five up to the to the dispensing yard uh, so when they're ready they can get moved in. Some of my favorite railroading videos, you know, actual real-time railroading videos are when they're switching out cars. I find it fascinating and I know that's where the action is, I think, and I really love to see them. Uh, most of them are real fans that are just off the side of the road and watching them go by and, you know, that's uh, curiosity too, but... I really like it when I can see the the crew out there on the track switching the points and riding the back of the train and moving the cars around.
trying to decide whether I want to hook these two cars together. These aren't the ones we're taking. I'm just going to let them sit. Sometimes there's a benefit to keeping them separated, and other times it's you know just best to hook them together. Unfortunately, the conductor is uh, really nothing more than a floating camera that flies back and forth. Unlike the uh, the engineer who can get up and actually walk in, in the simulated form of walking or jogging. But the uh, conductor can do nothing but hang on to the back or fly back. And, uh, really, a fly camera. kicking this <laughs> hopper cars down the railways. I still got a couple more to move and I want to make sure there's plenty of room here. Right. I think we could take these couple and hook them up to those tanks and have all five of our tanks together. thing with these free roam scenarios or any scenario you don't get to select the weather it's all pre-scripted with all the scenarios unlike the timetable services where you can choose your weather and choose your service but uh, I like that it's a sunny afternoon it just uh, it's not the best looking clouds uh, so far I find uh, the light cloud layer where the high level clouds is very realistic looking uh, these medium level clouds that they're showing now are eh, not as great one of the things that becomes very apparent you know for doing a simulation or even in real life or whatever you know shuffling cars around takes quite a bit of time half a car truck half a truck that'll do yep I got all five there's still a hopper car up at the other end and we still got these hoppers that need to get separated out. So we got these two. Let's get those out of the way.
We're on our way again. switch waiting for it to and then walk his way over that's one thing I find fascinating when I do watch uh, you know videos of actual conductors sometimes they ride and other times they just feel like walking and they'll walk a few cars rather than ride A lot of things to think about and we see some indecision going on and I uh, uh, think uh, did I leave myself plenty of room is there a cur is there a bend in the track still from the switch points am I too close to the points you know you gotta you gotta think that stuff through make sure you got uh, good separation between the rails You have plenty of room. Probably can get another car in there. Which is what we need to do. we're doing today here is we're making up a train but we're making it up for a purpose and now in this case we're making up tank cars for the purpose of delivering uh, to the local ethanol dispensing uh, sta uh, stands and those stands are up the road about uh, I don't know eight kilometers I think it's a little bit of a trip up there it's not that far actually Quite a short trip. Very fidgety today. see engineers right there you can see as well as anybody no separation between him and the car we're hooking up to okay moving on took a little bit of a walk to get to the other side of the train I'm on the far end now the engine being on the other side we still got this hopper to take care of.
Riders on train cars have to be very careful about what they're, what's along the track. You don't hit any posts or signs or point flags or <laughs> other cars. I tell you, a conductor in the yard, uh, they work pretty hard, and they're constantly on the go and on their feet. And if they're cold, if it's cold out, they're cold. A little different than a train that has to travel, you know, 100 miles, 200 miles, and the conductor's riding along and keeping everything on the radio and and the regular. Uh, detector checks but sitting in the cab with the engineer and the warmth and not on his feet and as much as he would be working the working the cars should be plenty of room there these together checking the knuckles the knuckles, the knuckles. checking the knuckles You know, I, I can't help myself. I'm, I'm just thinking as I'm switching these cars around how much a pleasure this is in the free roam environment uh, just to do the job, the task at hand, uh, 
in your mind you have to think through what you're doing and how far cars have to be where you want to set them uh, this is so much better than uh, doing switching operations in a service and in the timetable service if it's a switching operation uh, then they feel the need to tell you every move and you know it just uh, kind of to me takes the fun out of it all I mean we did quite a bit of back and forth here in, in this, in this uh, last uh, 15 minutes or so and I guess it's been more than that but that's quite a few cars to, to do so freely and not have somebody tell you to move forward 100 yards and hook the formation and back it up get out switch the point move up 400 yards and you know that that's gets tiresome Well, we've been in the conductor's uh, position for a while, so let's get in the engineer's chair. Okay, staying in the engineer's chair, the conductor got out, switched the points, and we can move ahead. So this is a simple matter of a runaround. We're on the wrong side of the tank cars, and we want to be on the other side, and We'll get ourselves in position and all set and ready to go here. I did edit this a little bit, but uh, I think you can see here um, I'm going the full length here and not editing out the, the ride at all. Um, I think uh, some of you may like the real-time aspect of it without too much editing. There's this balance between uh, People wanting to see uh, everything and then, you know, there being these long videos. So, hey, you watch as much as you want or as little as you want. Came out of the cab, I took it 
took too much of a break. Couldn't remember which way it was supposed to go. Yep, that one's in the right... the right direction. I'm up on the back of the train here and back of the locomotive I should say and kind of st I like standing on the porch I was looking at this chain and it's kind of fixed in the anim there's no not animated, it's not you know, it's it's not jiggling around at all. This is an interesting point here. I mean, if you if you do have to run around the train, usually it's quite a ways, and it, it takes a little while. And uh, you know, whether for a run around to be worthwhile, you really should have plenty of length there to to park quite a few cars. And in this case, it's a good length of a yard, so the run around takes some time. And this is one of the reasons, if at all possible. Uh, you know, train crews try not to do runarounds. Which means most of the deliveries are done to, uh, in a way that they're going to deliver all of their cars to industries that are uh, trailing, trailing point industries. Yeah, so now we're hooked up, we're all set up. Normally we do a brake test. That would take some time. Of course today we have all tank cars going to one industry, so we don't have to worry about that. We're gonna end up taking it from this yard up to the, uh, you know, like I said, about eight kilometers down the way to the, to the next yard. I don't even know if it's that far. Doesn't seem like it's that far. But the strategy would be, and, and maybe sometime I'll, I'll do this, uh, I'll find a way uh, in the scenario to go ahead and do deliveries where we have both trailing point industries and uh, facing point industries. And so what you do is you uh, set up your your car. So you do all your trailing point industries first. You get down to the end of the line. Then you can then you do one run around and um, and come back the other way. And then all those facing point industries you do last, and they'll become the trailing point as you go home.
listen to that a few times and figure it out. Yeah, if I end up uh, doing another video where we'll do just that, you can see it demonstrated in in practice. Just in case you were wondering, uh, I can't keep that point uh, turning into the yard. It has to be that main track that goes around the yard. Uh, I look at it as the bypass track. I don't know if there's a terminology for it. Maybe it's the main line. But that's the track I use to always keep clear. And if you want to go from one end of the yard to the other. So you always got to keep that point uh, you know, when not in use, you keep it for the main, uh, straight out condition without turning into the yard. So, that took a little bit of a walk. Uh, of course, we would have left the conductor back there, waited for the train to pass, then he would have called in, said you can stop it now, and then he would have had a walk all the way back. Unless you get some yard hand to volunteer to do that for you. Now it's interesting, the next few miles is a lot of horn hunting. gates don't make any uh, sound and they've never been fixed. Uh, although I think most of the modern routes coming out of Ducktail Games, all the gates make the noise that they're supposed to make. I did say miles and <laughs> hey, we're in Canada now. I should be talking kilometers. But there's a lot of uh, roads that intersect this track along the way. It's a busy area. So there's either going to be a lot of horn honking or, uh, you know, blowing, uh, blowing of the horn. 
Well, the res when you get into the residential area, they, they may uh, opt during the day and, uh, or, or during certain times at night not to have the trains blow the horns. I, <clears throat> I don't know what the rules are. But I do uh, love the the detail here. Plenty of buildings, plenty of trees, plenty of scenery, underbrush. To me, a good looking uh, roadbed. And even to the point where you see buildings and streets off in the, off in the distance. Point still pretty far up there. I uh, I'm always surprised that uh, I'm able to knock out these kilometers so quickly uh, that I usually run past these points and have to back it up or do a different strategy. So I got overly cautious. <laughs> And uh, stop the train a little bit of a distance. Ah, no problem. Uh, better come up short than, and uh, you can always uh, ease back up. Or conductor can't wait to get out of the cab and take a walk. Uh, he can do that too. In this case, we don't want to stay on the main drag. We want to go ahead and turn into the yard. So we're going to need to make sure that these points are thrown back to where they're supposed to be. So I'll just leave the conductor behind. He'll do that. Walk his way back to the train. slow down enough he can jump on right to tail so you know with this video I tried to give you pretty much the beginning of it from the conductor's viewpoint and then uh, about halfway through once we got the train set up from the engineer seat and uh, most of all it did it without the hood Now, I could go from here and do a run around and swap out the 
the five cars that are currently in the ethanol banks and that are loaded and swap them out with these five empties and get them in there but that would be another you know 40 minutes of uh, a video so I'm gonna go ahead and just creep it up here a ways and park it call it done In case you're wondering, I'm putting together a video at another uh, another kind of freight type video in Clinchfield. I think that's in West Virginia, and uh, that'd be older freight cars and go back in time a little bit. So I'm looking forward to doing that for you, and we can ride through the West Virginia mountains. as we uh, move some freight around in Clinchfield. So, hopefully you enjoyed this one and a little bit more leisurely and have, have a good day and I'll catch you next time.